the the sort of children of those immigrants who moved here for uh, prosper to prosper in employment opportunities are sort of growing up now and they're becoming either their their own persons, whether that be you know doctors, lawyers, or some of us become you know um, struggling artists and whatnot. And we're starting to for those of us who are artists, we sort of started to create stories that sort of talk about our experience of being an immigrant and a, and, a, and a child of immigrants living in Canada. So so I think that's happening. In terms of the university thing, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't go to university in Toronto. I, had, I went to university in a very white college out east, but um, I never felt, I, I never really felt that uncomfortable out there. And here in Toronto, especially, I think that um, if you're a person of color, you're like in the majority. And, um, you know, but that doesn't mean that the university is not without its racial issues, which still exist to this day here, here in the city. You know, I'm seeing a lot more. I mean, we're seeing a lot more content from from Asian Americans now, which is which is great. I mean, I watch Vice a lot of times. We've we've seen quite a few quite a few uh, shows that are actually based out of out of uh, Toronto or. We've seen, you know, quite a few American shows that have Asian representation in it as well. So, I mean, it's great to be able to see the the expansion in terms of that. You know, I mean, it, it's great. And, and talk a little bit about Toronto itself as a, you know, it seems like, you know, between Vancouver and Toronto, those are like the two big, big metropolises in terms of movie making or show making, because a lot of actually, and again, kind of ironic, the United States, a lot of United States productions are moving north towards Toronto in Vancouver to be able to to film their from film their series. I mean, have you been observing what's been going on in terms of productions up there in Toronto? Ab- absolutely, and and I'm so happy for my friends who are uh, crew members because they they just have endless employment opportunities. And you know, uh, I'm not sure how many Americans are actually aware that when they're watching these big Netflix shows, they're just staring at Toronto. So, like off the top of my head, uh, Snowpiercer. Uh, Queen's Gambit and The Boys are all filmed in Toronto. So if you if you're a fan of any of those shows, you're looking at you know different parts of Toronto. And I hope it it continues growing. I do hope I do hope, and I think the government's pressuring the American productions to do this, that they take on more Canadian uh, creatives, such as writers and directors, onto their productions as a part of filming everything here and getting the tax benefits necessary, so that hopefully I can get a job with one of these shows and whatnot. But um, but yeah, I think it's great to see. Again, I'm really happy for everyone who who is able to sort of take advantage of the of the sort of environment that that Canada has created for overseas productions or sorry, foreign productions, I should say. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've had um, an actress here that was on on the pitch show Big Sky on ABC here and they're filming out of Vancouver. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I absolutely yeah, yeah. understand that. I mean, which is funny because I'm originally from Montana, which is, you know, just south south of the Canadian border. And that's where the show is set, but it's being being shot in Vancouver. It's kind of odd, but but yeah, I, it's <laughs> that's funny. Funny. Um, and then there's a famous there's a famous thing with Rumble in the Bronx. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, the Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, but, years ago, of course. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The opening shot is of of a plane landing and and there's mountains behind it, and you can tell it's not the Bronx. You can tell it's Vancouver. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so yeah, so yeah, it's like, hard to paint out those mountains. No, it's got to be expensive. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so there's once in a while where you kind of mess up and say, yeah, they're they're someplace else. You're more than likely in Canada to do it. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah I have to understand that as well. I mean, what's been, you know, what's been the critical response so far with uh, with the movie and and people that have seen it. It's been pretty, pretty good across the board. Like um, the response has been uh, pretty much what I expected. The criticisms have been pretty much what I expected. You know, it's a low budget film. So uh, a lot of critics really feel the need to, to talk about the fact that it's a low budget film, which is fine. Um, so it doesn't leave a room which can, um, you know, w- w- which has its limitations. But in terms of the themes and the ideas and the, and the story elements and, and the jokes that I put in there, I think that the critical response has been pretty pretty fair and pretty good and uh, very favorable to what I what I uh, had anticipated. You know, I I was talking to, I've been talking to a couple of filmmakers over the past couple couple of weeks and you know, if you have a good enough story and you have good enough actors on the set to to execute that story, I think that, you know, budget shouldn't be a shouldn't be a complication. I think 
it'll be interesting to see where the next, you know, next five, 10 years is going to, to, to go with, with content. Obviously the big Hollywood studios are going to, you know, pay 50, you know, 60, hundred million dollars to do a big, huge blockbuster. But I think there'll be almost a backlash that people want to see it, you know, a nice drama or a nice comedy that's not overproduced. If it has a good story and it has good acting, there's no reason why it shouldn't be a good movie. So, and I, I think I, that Netflix I, I, is your, taking your over. your your movie and your movie is is right up there. You know, the story is solid. A lot of the themes are great, and the acting is is spectacular. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. With respect to um, you know, cer- certain things filling the vacuum, you know, the Netflix. The, the streaming movie is starting to sort of become its own thing, right? The thing that looks like it's between like three and $10 million usually fits within a genre, whether that's romantic comedy or horror or like, you know, like a, maybe, maybe a small mystery movie or whatever. And, you know, I, I hope that that blossoms because when you have, when you don't have a huge budget, you have more room for creativity and you don't have to appeal to all four quadrants and whatnot and gives you a lot more artistic license. Um, but yeah, thank you for saying that such nice things about my movie. I, I, Really proud of it. I'm really proud of the entire crew who worked on it, which, by the way, they were not paid what they deserved. I mean, they were paid, but they they should they all deserve a lot more money. But they all uh, took a pay cut to work on this project to make it look like it cost a lot more money than it actually did. Well, once, um, you know, maybe, we'll, you know, once once the, uh, you know, the popularity comes up, you'll get a big streaming deal and you can you can pay it back. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's again, a good, nice little showcase piece for some of the actors as well. I mean, to, to have something like this on the reel, I think is, you know, is worth a ton. You know, I'm you know, uh, Celine did an absolute great job. And I think that'll, this will probably, you know, book her so many more gigs down the line. So I think in the long run, they'll probably, they'll probably end up, end up profiting, you know, in other ways. I hope so. And I think, I think that it's already helped Celine a little bit already, but yeah, yeah. I, I want everyone of the, everyone to work on the movie to get, you know, to help them to, that this movie helps them get the next job that hopefully pays them a lot more money than, than this one did. Um, any thoughts about, you know, you know, doing it, doing in their next movie or uh, writing an, another movie or. I mean, there hasn't been a lot to do during the pandemic, during lockdown, except right for me. So, um, yeah, I've written a few scripts that that, it, that fit into various genres. I'm really itching to make like a romantic comedy, to tell you the truth. I don't know why. It just feels like, you know, it, it feels like uh, maybe once we get out of this sort of lockdown COVID thing, people will want sort of the something more fluffier. Uh, you know, more sort of just like a fun thing to watch. Maybe they don't want to be, you know, hit in the face with the horrors of the of the real world anymore. They just want like like everything that a romantic comedy offers, essentially. So I'm really itching to make one that I've written. But um, you know, there's there's a few projects that I'm trying to push. Yeah, I understand that as well. I mean, I'm I'm in the middle of of editing uh, editing mine. Uh, so. You know, hopefully it it gets done. I'm hopefully going to have at least uh, you know the 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 cut done by by the summer. So hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully things kind of. I mean, I that's what I've been doing. I've been writing and I've been I've been doing uh, I've been uh, editing this editing the the film that we've shot what three years ago. <laughs> We're yeah. still trying to get all the editing done. So yeah, yeah, it's a process, man. I, I feel yeah. You. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, interesting to say, say the least. I mean, where can people find you um, on social media? I, I primarily just use Instagram. I'm at the Lee Dong, T-H-E-L-I-D-O-N-G. That's pretty much where you can find me. I never use Twitter. I use Twitter. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Stealing School is currently available on um, video on demand. And like I said, hopefully some of the streaming services pick it up because I think it's a really good movie. I think the acting and the in the story are very very solid. So hopefully we'll be able to to see more from you in the in the in the coming in the coming years. Thank you so much. I hope that I hope so as well. And good luck on finishing your movie as well. I know I know it's going to be a great feeling when you finally do. Yeah, I mean it's it's you know it's a comedy, so I'm you know I'm I'm interested to see how the audience reacts. So yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Lee, for, ta- for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You can check us out on Twitter at SWIV, that's at SWIV, and somewhere in Vegas on Facebook. You guys can check us out on Instagram at SWIV Podcast, that's at SWIV Podcast. We record these shows, and we drop these shows every Monday and Wednesday, so definitely check us out on wherever you get your podcasts, be it Stitcher Radio, our home, or iHeartRadio, or, you know, or iTunes, or anywhere that you get your podcasts. You can also, guys, can check us out 
All you have to do is ask Alexa to please play Somewhere in Vegas, and they will play the latest episode uh, for you as well. I also want to let you guys know, uh, you know, like I said, catch us us up every Monday and Wednesday. You can check the archives at Spreaker.com as well. Just look up for Somewhere in Vegas, and they'll be able to find the the show and see some of the old episodes as well. With that in mind, guys, uh, we'll see you next time here on Somewhere in Vegas.